Welcome everyone to the latest edition of uh, Match Day Minus One. Here we go again at St. David's, uh, our show presented as always by our founding partners. Uh, many thanks to them. Points bet, many thanks to my partner, Mr. <laughs> Michael LaHood, who's uh, back in the house. Michael, we're, we're all set and ready to go again. Another, another, another busy week. Uh, we've got some breaking news to get to in just a yep. few moments. And what a, what a week for Austin as well, a three-game a three week. Um, let's just get your brief thoughts on Wednesday night, first of all, before the breaking news. Um, and, and deal with that first, because you and I were both there as fans with with a lot of you at San Antonio in, in uh, at Toyota Field. Um, what 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 are your takeaways from Wednesday night? Well, before this game really kicked off, the fans, the Austin FC fans, coined it El Taco Clasico, <laughs> the battle between the breakfast taco and the puffy and taco the puffy, yeah, in yeah. San Antonio, and liked. it didn't failed to deliver. Yeah. I thought Austin FC fans really created an atmosphere and talking to people in San Antonio, they were impressed. And I told them, hey, welcome to Verde. Yeah, That's what Verde yeah. means. And now on the field, it was really just that excellence in the box. And I thought Austin FC did well to get that goal from Diego Fagundes, but in open cup play, consecutive goals tend to win matches. Yeah. And that second goal was just begging and it came back to cost them in the end. Yeah. All I'd say all I'd say in addition is classic cup tie. Yeah. Great a spectacle. We end up on the wrong end of it. You know, we move on. You know, yeah. they're, they're they're out of the open cup. They they will be there'll be many more open cup runs to come. And uh look where we are look where we are in the league, which is what we're gonna get to uh, in in a second, um, with uh, Vancouver in town. But before that, Michael we must move on because literally just uh, seconds ago, breaking news involving our wonderful home stadium, the Fortress, uh, which we're going to be back at tomorrow night. Uh, the U.S. men's national team can't get enough of Q2, <laughs> Michael. They are coming back. Uh, it has just been announced that they will play on June the 10th against Granada or Grenada? Is it uh, Which well, one? It's, tomato, it's, tomato? Yeah, yeah. well, I... I'm kind of dual lingo when it comes yep. to the British pronunciations and English pronunciation, <laughs> American pronunciation. So this one, I'll go Granada. Yeah. What do you say? I, I Granada is, seems, seems to flow more naturally for me. Uh, June the 10th, it'll be the third visit for the men's national team. Of course, the women have been here too. Uh, it's actually going to be a competitive game as well. It's a CONCACAF Nations League game, the opening game for the U.S. Uh, in the Nations League. We don't know. There's a chance that it might actually be the U.S.'s uh, last game on home soil before the World Cup of Qatar. Mm. That is unclear at the moment. There's a very good chance it might be because there's only one more international window to come after June. That's in September. And there's a very good chance they may not play a game in the U.S. in September, we've been told. But all of that is to be determined. What we do know is... Fans are going to have another chance to see the U.S. Uh, in action, and they have a yeah, let's face it, they have a great record at Q2 so far. Yeah. They beat Qatar by a goal to nil yep. in the Gold Cup semi-final. Was there for that one? They beat Jamaica by two goals to nil yep. in the World Cup qualifier. So Gold Cup, World Cup qualifier, and now now Nations League. I guess we're completing the set. Well, there, there's something about Q2 Stadium and Austin FC fans and fans from all around the country and really all around the world. If you get a chance to come to Q2 Stadium, the moment you step foot in this stadium you'll know that there's something just different just from the colors verde and black to the architecture and then oh yeah the soccer that's being played u.s men's national team players ranting and raving greg berhalter there's a reason why they come back to q2 and the city of austin we said it before ball was even kicked for austin fc austin is a soccer city and it, it almost is appropriate yeah to have the U.S. men's national team here right before they go and play in the biggest sporting event around the world, the World Cup in Qatar 2022. And 2018, behind this young U.S. men's national team, 2022, full steam ahead. Yeah. Uh, a quote from Greg Berhalter in the, uh, in the in the press release that U.S. soccer have just put out. Literally, this news is hot off the press, just broken. Uh, Berhalter saying the facilities in Austin are simply world class. We've had incredible experiences there mm. in both the Gold Cup and World Cup qualifying. We think it's the perfect venue to begin the defense of the Nations League title. Um, so June June the 10th, um, some ticketing information I can give you. Again, hot off the press. Season ticket members and waitlist members of the Oak Collective will be communicated with via email from the club with their pre-sale information. Those who aren't members and like to be in order to get access to the pre-sale, you should visit austinfc.com slash tickets. And for everyone else, 
Tickets will go on sale to the general public a week from today, next Friday, that is the 29th of April, and you can secure yours by visiting the Q2 Stadium website, q2stadium.com um, site. This is this is fantastic yeah. news to have have them back. I mean, yeah. you know, that, I think the challenge is, can we make Q2 Stadium the, the, the fortress-like atmosphere <laughs> for a national team game yeah. in the same way as we can for an Austin FC game. Well, it's becoming a fortress. Yeah, They have an unblemished record so far, and we hope to keep that going for the U.S. men's national team and for the women's as well. And uh, when you said the Oak Collective, I just couldn't help but think the healy Lahoud combo going from the booth <laughs> to the Oak Collective yeah. for that match might be a spectacle. Yes. Well, we did we did the same on Wednesday night, didn't we? In, yeah. to, in Toyota Park, which was, uh, yeah. I always enjoy the, uh, the experience of getting, getting to watch a game with you without the microphone in front of it. I mean it's a of course it's not as enjoyable as with the microphone, but even without Michael, it's always it's always a fantastic and we, we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves on Wednesday night, I've got to yeah. say. No, it was a unique experience. I think sometimes you get to have perspective when yeah. you're away from the booth and even as a player, if you are a Nick Lima or Alex Ring that didn't play in that match Getting a pause, getting a chance to really enjoy the game for what it is and be grateful and have gratitude. The fact that you get to wear the Verde in black and represent this team in this city, it motivates you for what comes next, which is this weekend's match against Vancouver. Before we get to that, let's move on. So we're giving you the breaking news, some news that broke, of course, a little earlier this week. It revolved around the All-Star Game. Mm. Uh, MLS announcing details of the 2022 MLS All-Star Game, which is going to be in Minneapolis at uh, Allianz Field, their fantastic uh, stadium up there. Yep. Uh, well, we can start speculating when Q2 will get an All-Star game. I mean, yeah, it took Allianz to the third season, or is it the No, it's the fourth yeah, season fourth, yeah. to get an All-Star. So bear in mind, that's the timeline perhaps for Q2 to get one. But this year it's going to be as it was last year in LA with the, um, the MLS All-Stars playing the Liga MX All-Stars. Uh, Austin players on the field. <laughs> Who are we going to see that ah, night? Man, Mr. Healy, if Sebastian <laughs> Driussi is not on that field, and mm -hmm. if he's not a starter, I'm not having it with this MLS Cup All-Star right. game. Sebastian Driussi has to be in that. And also a one, Diego Fagundes. But the way he's playing at the moment, they, 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 they should certainly both be in the running. But with Driussi, they... They can't be. And we, we have his jersey yeah. up today, by the way. If you can't see behind Michael, yeah, I think you can just see the very edge of it. His number seven is hanging uh, hanging bright. And I think the way the first, what what are we, uh, a quarter of the way yep. into the season, the way, the way that's gone, he should not only be in the conversation for MLS uh, um, All-Star game, but how about MVP right oh, now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Whenever I get a chance to talk with some of the league pundits, Andrew Reby, Calling yeah. you, you're my guy, but I'm calling Austin's you. Austin's favorite pundit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, keep it coming, Weebs. But whenever you get to talk with anyone outside of Austin, I, I think fans from other teams, pundits from around the league, they're really just starting to appreciate how good this mm. guy is. And it's not just what he's doing in the stats; he is a complete team player. In the mm. last match against DC United on the road, it was Driussi who drew that second yellow from Ola Kamara. Yeah, and then that changed the dynamic. Yes, you get the man up, but it's your designated player and arguably one of your best players, one of the best players in Major League Soccer that does the extra work. He's mm -hmm. willing to go the extra mile defensively. And just those 50-50 plays and 50-50 balls, yeah. he, he'll put his body on the line. And then in the final third, his ability to arrive inside the box, it's impeccable. It's almost immaculate yeah. to watch. I, I, I'm really glad you honed in on that because obviously his quality he, he, and his charisma and his class is there for all to see at all times. He just he just oozes it yeah. on the field. But what a lot of people don't always appreciate is how hard the guy works. And oh. I know Claudio Reyna and Josh Wolf appreciate it. And that incident in D.C., you, you touched upon it. That was a classic. I mean, what, what are we in, like the 51st minute of the first half there? Yeah. He's trying to get to the byline. Well, he's, he's a guy who does not stop no yeah. matter what the score is. And really, that's the extra effort that's catapulted him towards being one of the leaders for this team. Yeah. And you saw it last year when they played the LA Galaxy and he captained the team. It was a Sebastian Driussi performance on the second goal where he ran towards the right side, won a 50-50 against two Galaxy defenders, yeah. and that set up the cross in for the second goal. Yeah. So we hope to see Driussi out there. August uh, is is the month for the MLS All Star Game in uh, in Minneapolis. At, at least one op Austin representative. Of course, fans will all get the chance to vote 
for the MLS uh, All-Star team, Michael, which is always an interesting process. Yeah. Maybe we could do a bit of uh, ballot stuff in this year. And don't shy away from that, by the way, because there <laughs> no. are plenty of fan bases out there that do just that. Atlanta, I'm talking at you. <laughs> um, but uh, plenty of fan bases do that. So I, I think it's up to us to really yeah. ensure that there's some Austin representation, maybe Drewsy and a couple of others. Yeah, well, we do know this about Austin FC fans. They show up yeah. for games. They show up for anything. Now it's time to show up. Get on your phones. Get on your laptops. Get on your iPads, whatever it is that you have, and get at least one Austin FC player there because they're deserving yeah. of the way that they're playing on the field and really the way that they're impacting this team. And I can't, like I said before, Sebastian Driussi for sure deserves yeah. to be there. And I am very high on Diego Fagundes, and I'm willing to give an honorable mention with how he started. Yeah. Danny Pereira. Oh. needs to be a candidate as well. The young Venezuelan deep-lying playmaker yeah. is just so fun to watch. I don't think he's yet registered on a national level either. Mm -hmm. you, we talked to, you, you mentioned the national pundits, some of our, some of our friends, but uh, sometimes they're surprised when we bring up the name of Danny Pereira. I don't think it's really been recognized yet what this kid is actually doing in year two, mm -hmm. like a quarter of the way into year two of his professional career. We are seeing a blossoming from Pereira. What people aren't recognizing now, they yeah. soon will. Right. Because after this game against Vancouver, Austin FC then will go toe-to-toe -to -toe against some of the league, let's say the pundits' favorites so yeah. far in uh, this early season. And that's, that's really where young players like Danny Pereira can continue to cement their worth to the team yeah. and so cement what we get to see on a daily basis. All right, let's... Uh Cast our thoughts to Saturday night. Back at Q2. Time for the team to get a, uh, a nice big cup of Q2, as, uh, <laughs> as Coach Josh Wolf likes to brilliant. say. And, uh, and you know, if there's, any, you know, if there's any hangover at all from Wednesday night, which I don't believe there will be, yeah. um, what, a, what, a, what a remedy that is to come back and take on the Vancouver Whitecaps. Um, what's, your, what's your feeling? Let's talk a little bit about the enemy and the task mm. that awaits Austin because, um, again... Very different year two to year one. You can think about the games in year one against the Whitecaps, and quite frankly, we should have probably won, uh, taken four points at least out of six. We took yeah. zero, lost both games 2-1, and how different how different it is now for both teams um, heading into this, this first clash of year two. The Vancouver Whitecaps, I think they were the beneficiary of a very charismatic, passionate coach yep. who came in at the right time for them last season, replacing Mark Dos Santos and Vanny Sartini, and a guy who's a tactical coach, but really put the team that back four or back three, excuse me, and then midfield four with the two wing backs, it's gonna work really hard. Then the front three. When you have a goal scorer that's reliable like Brian White, who mm -hmm. emerged out of nowhere a guy that Jared Stroud knows very well from his New York days. Yeah, That helps your cause. Ryan Galt coming in, and he came in in that game against Austin FC here at Q2 Stadium and really announced himself well for the Vancouver Whitecaps. So many things fell into place at the right time last year for them. Yeah, And they're a team that I think they've fallen in the wounded animal category. Austin FC playing back-to-back -back wounded animals. Yes. Last time they did, they got the win. Memorable right. win against D.C. Yeah, Can they follow it up? against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Well, what, what do they have to do tomorrow? What's, I mean, the, the Whitecaps are an interesting team, aren't they? Because they always give you uh, some space to play. It's like they have quite a, an interesting setup. 3-4-3, well, uh, three, three, as you mentioned. They're but, very dangerous on the counter. Yeah, They're a team that will play very direct. They're not going to try and connect passes through the midfield. They want this game to be back and forth. And they have athletes up top. Yeah. I think of Caicedo. I think Lucas Cavallini coming off the bench or starting. He's a <laughs> physical striker. Brian White, he's mm. a goal poacher. And Dahomey, some might say that he's had a slow start season, but he's already had a couple of assists and a goal to his name for a, a guy who's a converted wingback, who's not a natural winger for the Whitecaps. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how Josh and the coaching staff sort of uh, allocate our assets, given given 120 minutes on Wednesday night. An interesting. I, I don't think Diego Fagundes will ever stop running, so <laughs> I don't think there's any, any any part of him that isn't involved no. uh, or has anything taken out of him. Uh, fullbacks might be might be an interesting question for for Josh and his staff, but uh, you know, can we come out and and kind of dominate a game at home? Uh, as we have been doing recently. I mean, even in the narrow win against Minnesota, I mean, we were, we yeah. were on top in that game. It's like, can we grab the initiative 
against the Whitecaps. Well, I believe if you get the drum roll, I believe it's time. Leads us time of day. to the LaHood Mooch. Yes, Mr. Healy. Get the ponchos out, the sun's out, <laughs> and get the ponchos off of me, and the sun's out, guns out. Yeah. Today's LaHood mood, I'm determined. Mm. I'm feeling really determined. The mood is determined. Determination. And for Austin FC to be determined and get a determined result, they'll have to do these two things. It's the pre-mood. Mm. One is efficiency in the final third. In that yeah. Open Cup game, and even in D.C., they had some golden opportunities. I think of the Maxi Rucci chance yep. in the first half. I think of the Julio Cascante chance yep. that hit off the crossbar. Yep. And the turnaround in the second half was they were able to convert high percentage chances. In Major League Soccer, when you're playing against wounded animal teams, when you get your chance, you put them to the sword. And it leads me to the second part of the Lahoon mm. mood is ruthlessness. Yep. This Austin FC team in 2022 – Ruthlessness, they have started to find their form and find themselves becoming a ruthless team to put this Vancouver team to the sword, consecutive goals. When yeah. you have momentum, you smell blood in the water, oh, yeah. that ball's got to be in the back of the net. Yeah. Goals still seem to come in bunches for us. I mean, yeah. three in 10 minutes in D.C., only the sixth team ever to come back from two goals down in the 80th minute. Um, Think about the the season opening wings. How goals came in bunches against Cincinnati and Miami. This is a this is a an eminently winnable game. I mean, this this could could and should be win number three in a row for Austin, which we've not done yet as a club. It's another big step to take, and and I think Vancouver are going to let us have plenty of the ball tomorrow. They will. They're also a desperate team. Yeah. So they will come into Q2 Stadium looking for three points at all costs. Any way they will get it. But for Austin FC, patience is going to be a virtue. Josh Wolf talked to us today about balancing out that desire to go and get in the attack. And when a team's giving you a lot of the possession, it, you almost get baited into wanting to score every time you get the ball. But yeah. an Austin FC, that they're at their best, a possession-oriented team, a team that's patient. Against DC, they found their patience. Yeah. In the second half, they came out of the locker room and believed. Yeah. They believed in what they were doing. They believed in the tactics, and it showed. And the moments presented themselves in the form of three goals. Right. Uh, a moment of gratitude for you, just to uh, start to tie a bow on proceedings today. Uh, we have um, a huge cachet of people from the front office, in fact, the club in general, uh, volunteering down today at uh, the litter pickup on Lady Bird Lake, uh, mm. which is. Yeah, it's Earth Day. It's Earth Day weekend. Uh, this club is always hugely committed to issues of uh, sustainability in general. This, I mean, you, if you go down to the lake today, you'll see a lot of Austin FC employees, both on the water and off the water. I know you would have been on the water if you were doing it, oh, Michael. Yeah. Absolutely. A paddleboard I may have goodness. stayed on dried land myself. But, <laughs> yeah. but it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful team effort down there as well. Well, we, we know that one of the pillars of this club is community. Yeah. It's one thing, I said it before, it's one thing to say you're a community-focused club. It's another thing to do it. And yet again, Austin FC. And shout out to the league for recognizing this club in yeah. that way of opening up platforms for us to do that. And you know, it's, it's one thing to be a community-focused team by word, but it's another thing to do it by action. Yeah. And it just makes me proud. Yeah. Thanks again to uh, one of our main partners, Yeti, as well, for making, uh, making that possible. And, and also, you know, it's Earth Day. Austin FC just announced this morning its membership in the Green Sport Alliance as well. So uh, that's our moment of gratitude. Um, Let's uh, let's draw the curtains on this show, Michael. Saturday night, um, we'll be back on the CW uh, pregame show starting at seven o'clock. Kick off at seven thirty. Full half hour pregame show. Me, you, Sonny Guadarrama, Roger Valdivieso, yeah. Andy Lochnane, our Special club guess. club president, will be joining us for one of those segments. We'll, we'll we'll look back at the events of last week. Obviously, look forward to Vancouver. Can't wait to. It's got, it's been a while since we've been yeah, on that it, desk in a full. Yeah. <laughs> Q2 Stadium with the with the fans right behind us. Just can't wait. Right. It's been too long. Yeah. The boys are back. The fans are back. The city of Austin's back at Q2. It's how it should be. Hope to see you all tomorrow night, either at the stadium or on TV. Remember, the CW, the place to go, uh, we will be on air from 7 p.m. onwards. Thanks very much, and we'll uh, talk to you next time as well from here at St. David's. See ya.